Kind of Funny Studios is brought to you by Deus Ex Mankind Divided, now available on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. This new critically acclaimed entry into the Deus Ex universe once again has players taking on the role of Adam Jensen with an all-new arsenal of state-of-the-art weapons and augmentation. See what all the excitement is about at DeusExx.com. Greg, I want to hear your top seven favorite games. Well, unlike you, I went and did all my research. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not a mm-hmm. pussy, ladies and gentlemen, I have numbered them. Things happen. I, I went and watched the old ones. I did all these things. Number seven, Mario Kart Double Dash. Wow. Very, very, very interesting call, Greg. Kevin, give me my one shot. Fran Mirabella, 7.9. Go fuck yourself. The biggest travesty in IGN.com's history. I was Mario, an when that review went up. Mario Kart Double Dash. You want? <laughs> Tim asked me why it's the best Mario Kart. Why, why is Mario Kart Double Dash? The Pure best Mario Kart? racing, Tim. Mm. None of no, you, We don't get these motorbikes. We don't. We're not driving on the walls. We're not fucking using hang gliders or any of this shit. We're just racing, and there's two of you for some reason. But you don't play so in the car. So you're mode. not just racing. You don't. Well, no, it's just, there is another. We're totally just doing unnecessary cars. gimmick. It doesn't matter. Oh, let's when give you, everybody their own weapons. When why? you play it correctly, it doesn't matter. I guess. When you play correctly is one just one person one you're all your friends there going at it it doesn't matter this is one of the, i mean you want to talk about the promise of the gamecube and what made the gamecube great obviously what made the great gamecube great was the handle but the second thing mm-hmm. was the it was built for multiplayer and mm-hmm. for me mario kart double dash is on that pedestal of what i wanted out of mar what i wanted out of mario kart as a franchise what i wanted out of the gamecube as an experience mm-hmm. uh, i always talk about it you know my roommate Hayes bought it. We lived in a house of seven guys. And when he came home with that and Smash Brothers and like we came home and started playing these games, Smash was great. All right, great. Toadstool Tour, we had so much fun with. You know, I love Toadstool Tour. But when we had Cart, that was the one, man, where it was, I was so dialed into it and everyone was so dialed into it where it would be. I remember, I'll never forget this, where we had, it was everybody in our house all of their girlfriends, all of our friends sitting there playing, passing the controller, you know, fourth player, fourth place, always getting kicked off. And I remember going to dinner with my then girlfriend and like we were both eating as fast as possible to get back and go play more. Like that's how into this game we were and how well we knew those courses and baby park baby and park. all these fucking amazing things. And we're talking about favorite games, right? So that's yeah. the thing. I get to objectively look at it and be, or I'm sorry, totally uh, biasly look at it, subjectively look at it and talk about the fact that it's the emotions tied to it. It's the experience of it. I was never a big Mario Kart 64 fan. It, mm. it felt stiff to that me. That must have been a timing thing. Yeah, right? it was a timing thing. It got into my life at college when you know I was in this house with all these people who wanted to play games, and this is one that was there, and it was a bonding experience. And I do feel that the Mario Karts of today are obviously so much more is going on. They look better. I, I do like having you know my Wiggler Kart and my Cyber Slick Wheels and all these different things. I enjoy playing 8. You know that. Mm-hmm. But they, I think to an extent, they did get too cute with a lot of things, and there is so much fat on it where I really do just want it to get back to being an awesome kart racer and I'm unlocking things I'm doing things sure but I don't feel like there's mechanics or things that I just don't fully wrap my head around or that there's you know ways to get around it if you're not just good at kart racing yeah if that makes sense I mean yeah the Mario Kart franchise is so interesting in how it's grown you know seeing it on the the Super Nintendo that that game was pivotal that game was so important to people and like just it created a genre in a lot of ways right um, but then the N64 version really was the multiplayer. Yeah, like, here's battle is, mode. Here's, Let's go do battle this. Battle mode, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I always thought 64 was um, like radically different just be, the, because of how it looked, because it was kind of like a, the 2D like sprites yeah. in a 3D world. It always kind of felt weird. So you saying that it felt kind of sluggish, like I agree with that. Like, yeah. Because it, it always felt like you're controlling the character with the or they're controlling the world moving around a character and like when you tried to around. hop it just never worked for me you know what i mean like drifting so seamlessly is what well, I, I i feel kart is yeah exactly um and i, I don't love mario kart 64 sure. but i feel like where that shines is battle mode yeah 100 you know? and i feel like battle mode mario 64 battle mode is like unrivaled to this day in terms of mario kart and so i think that the the pure racing aspect of it it's it's great um snow crash team racing but uh mario kart double dash i did think added in terms of the the racing elements yeah. and stuff and definitely in terms of the the course layouts yeah. and all that. I did not like the um the be switching between characters sure. so specifically each character having their own special. Right. was 
I liked it because it was not balanced. Well, for me, I and mean, sure, maybe you just played with bad people. You know what I mean? You played and you weren't that good yourself. But me and my friends, we, you know, we were sharpened spears. We mm. we knew our characters, and mm -hmm. that was the thing. We, it was that Smash Brothers vibe where it was I was rolling Baby Luigi, Baby Mario. That was my team. Those mm. were the people I was taking out, and everybody else was baby had Park. they had their. <laughs> I was I, I, You're a big baby fan. <laughs> I still am to this day. Want to come see my van? No. The thing about it, I mean, there's just. It, it worked that way where it what the things you like about smash where you mm -hmm. know Nick's gonna sit on the side right and as pit and shoot arrows or whatever and you're gonna shirtless shulk the shit out of the room that was what it was in this where everybody yeah. knew we knew each other's shit you knew each other's how they were gonna use the things and that's how you got around it I think yeah, I mean, that's that definitely makes checks out makes sense uh, there was a super circuit on the Game Boy Advance that one kind of went a little bit more back to the, the SNES sure. one and that I mean it was fun having a portable but that wasn't a great game I mean yeah. shout out to Mario Kart DS and th but that's what I'm saying. I feel like they really kind of perfected it um, in Mario Kart DS, except and for snaking. That exactly. But uh, that's in terms of like then adding all the extra the stuff. Mario Kart Wii adding the the bikes. I think is that dividing moment for for a right. lot of people. But playing Mario Kart Eight, it's one of the, it's kind of like Smash Bros. Wii U, where it's just like, is it the best one? I don't know, but I mean, it's really damn good. Exactly. Like, they no, really they have iterated so much that it's just at a point where it's like. You can't complain. Every time I whoop your fucking ass at Mario Kart 8 for the Nintendo World Championship mm -hmm. here, kind of funny. I'm reminded of how much I enjoy it, how much I do like it, but I'm just not drawn to go back to it for some yeah. reason. I don't well, know I think why. I it's because we're grown ass men. I think sure. that really you know, has a lot to do with it. And that's it's why it's like, fave, and you're talking about it being a time capsule, exactly, right? It's a period exactly. of my life. So I totally get it. I can't hate on you for Double Dash, even though I kind of want to. Fuck you, Fran Mirabella. Everybody tweet him. I said that. Um, number six on my list, Infamous. Again, another one we've talked about at length. You know what I mean? For me, it was what I as a comic book fan have wanted forever, right? Of like watching a talented developer sucker punch, take on a comic book of their own, an original IP, go in there and tell their own story and make me care about all these different characters. You know, we talk about all the time, like Cole McGrath is such a cool character because he was just a normal fucking dude. He was just a bike messenger. He wasn't a great guy. And that's, you know, exhibited by the gameplay, of course, if you want to be good or you want to be bad, investigate that. But his surrounding cast, I found so interesting, whether it be Zeke, his best friend, who's this goofy asshole, whether it be Trish, who now his girl friend who you now have to have this subplot with of like well his activation killed her sister should she does she have the right to feel bad about this because he didn't ask for this why you know is she is she a jerk for that or not but then wrestling with those kind of emotions kessler is a villain and then of course the ending with kessler there's so many interesting points to that and let alone sub bosses and things you're going to fight in there let alone the race fear let alone all these different people that are doing something else in this game it was as a comic book fan, as you know, you're a comic mm -hmm. book fan. Comic book games are hard to do. They're hard to find. And we're talking about established people. Like, you know what I mean? Like the Batman games of late. Awesome. Obviously Spider-Man games. Oof, that's a, you know, that's a rough one. Let's, and then the, even the one you're talking about, let's do like uh, X-Men or let's do the, uh, the uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. Fun gameplay. Are we playing it for the story? Nah, are they really yeah, turning it on its head and doing something different? No. And so when you get your own world and you get to play through it, and I I loved the comic book cutscenes that mm -hmm. that's how they played out, and like the panels are moving and talking to you as they go. I thought the voice work was awesome. The acting was great. The choices were cool. It's dated. You know what I mean? That's why I think one of the reasons like Second Son never makes it on our top anything PlayStation Four list, right? Because you play that and it is very much still infamous one of like, hey, there's a floating icon over here, and you jump down and start. It's like, well, that's kind of you're making the Seattle that's like so perfect. Why doesn't it? Why does it work? Mm. But for a PS3 game, for Sucker Punch branching out, for an exclusive that actually panned out, <laughs> which was exciting at the time being on the PlayStation team, right? Like, <laughs> I remember when they showed that first trailer, getting excited for it, but then always having that thing of like, mm. wait and see, wait and see. But to get there and have the powers and have the uh, ability to explore you know open world for so long when i'm thinking of open world or sandbox i'm thinking gta and you're playing those games and you, the reason spider-man 2 on ps2 or that generation right yep. stands out all the time is because holy shit it's open world and i can go do whatever and yeah i'm repeating the same missions and oh my balloon and all this other stuff and the, the story's garbage you were just excited to be a superhero in open yep. world and that's what they nail and they continue to nail that sucker punch gets open world sandbox so well yeah i think that so i always talk about infamous as the one as the game i i think infamous is fantastic uh, as well I, I think it's a great game I think you and I were, were both huge fans of it when it came out and, and I don't think I have the affection that, I, that you have for the series but and I think the second one's in a, in a lot of ways far superior I agree um, we talk about this all the time gameplay wise I totally think so I think story wise and what I want out of as a package I liked Infamous once but so much. Infamous was an example of a game that just totally snuck up on me like I knew it was coming and, and I just didn't care that yeah. much and well then, comic book stuff right that doesn't yeah, speak to you generally. yeah and then I, I had to write the guide for it when I was at IGN and so I, I sat down and played and I was like wow this is really awesome this is a really really awesome game uh 
relatable. And, and I think what the, the see why Second Son was so disappointing was Second Son's gameplay was far superior to Infamous and Infamous Two. Sure. I think its powers were even really way cooler. But it's it's uh, and I think its mobility and its and all that kind of stuff was, turn to smoke up the pipe. Yeah, out yeah the top, like that was really cool off. shit in, in Second yeah. Son. It's just that it didn't have the heart, soul, and grit of Infamous and Infamous Two. It was Delson sucks and like you know and Cole, Cole is just a way cooler character. I think Seattle was nicely realized, but I do think that Empire City and, and New Marais were way, especially New Marais, I think was a really, really well, I think even uh, interesting place. For the, the, the setup and plot of Second Son, right, I feel like we were getting bogged down too much in like, well, let's, it, it looks so much real, or so, you know, Seattle looks so much realer. Let's make it more real. And the government's come in and done all this stuff. And those are cool things themes but they didn't plan, pan out in the way that okay cool somebody set off a bomb now you have powers and there's other crazy fuckers that have powers doing all this shit mm. all right now there's a beast coming and it's going to eat the world you're like these are comic book storylines that i thought were more fun to play whereas this one's like yeah. all right we're building this kind of it's kind of a bummer with second son just in the sense that i think they shot themselves in the foot like i, I think the series will continue in some way at some point but with someone but not with them um but we didn't expect that out of, at least I didn't expect that out of, out of Sucker Punch. You know, these guys, I mean, Sly Cooper. So we knew that they had some sort of pedigree in like this open world or at least this hub world kind of situation. Yeah. But we didn't, I, I didn't know they had this in them. And, and uh, they put, they put themselves on the map. And I, I really do feel like they are in, because of the infamous franchise in the upper echelon. And they're not, Naughty Dog really contain, is up there. I think Polyphony probably are up there above them. But they're really up there with Gorilla and, and um, you know, Santa Monica. Sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah in, in terms 100%. of the Sony first parties because of that series. So I'm with you on that. Thank you, brother. Give me a pound. Yeah, dog. Number five. This is one that I predicted, ladies and gentlemen, when we did this before. When our mm. And I said I wasn't ready to put this on the list. Maybe with some marinating yep. it would. Gone Home. I'm putting it at number mm, five. Gone okay. Home is very much one of those games that just resonated. And I know I've talked about it ad nauseum a million times on here, so I won't beat a dead horse, right? But it's just a game that change something in me in the same I think now with distance from it in the way I talk about it and the way I bring it up all the time on shows for me it's a modern moment akin to Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1 where I always talk about that game special to me because I just got to that point with my friends where I'd been asked before like are you still into games Are you know this I'm like yeah but I don't know how much more I will be is it is it always going to be what the N64 is which is great but it's Mario and it's this and it's it's cartoony and it's not connecting with me on some emotional level. And I didn't say any of that. I didn't know that's what I was saying or what I was yeah. thinking. But then to get Metal Gear Solid and be like, oh shit, this is what games can be. This is where they're going. This is how they can be movies. They can make characters I care about. Oh my God. To get to Gone Home and have it be such a different experience, such a different game, go in not knowing what it was, thinking it was going to be a survival horror ghost game on uh, like Outlast or whatever. But then to get in there and learn these characters and have the diaries and meet Sam and meet Lonnie and to go through these experiences and get to the end of that game and be like, holy shit, this is what games can be. And to me, this is what the indie game can be. This is what the smaller game can be. This is what, you know, you go, you and I then go and play Emily is gone or away. Emily yeah, is away. away. We go yeah. play Emily is away and see what it is. You know, we go play, come, I go play coming out simulator. Um, uh, uh, driving in the car game. Uh, three fourths home. Three fourths home. We, that, it, that gone home was the tip of the sword for me. Cybell, right? Like it's these games that are telling me, this is the power of games as we move forward and we get better storytellers and we get better experiences that you can be put you can literally be put in someone else's shoes live a day in their life and take something from their life and apply it to yours mm -hmm. yeah i think uh you know you making me play gone home was one of the great favors you ever did for me because it was a pc game and and you know pc gaming's for nerds so i was i was i was worried about okay. whether or not you know, I would, I would, I would resonate. I remember sitting in the office, which was ended up being our studio, um, that we recorded everything in for a year and a half after that. But, uh, I think what's special about gone home, um, is not, it's necessarily the beats of its story. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people get upset that, you know, it's like, Oh, it's a social justice where it's like it was about lesbians and coming out of my guess it's actually really not what's important about and it. You had your me. chance to play it. Don't it, bitch about spoilers. Yeah, I don't, whatever. Like, yeah, you definitely had more than enough. Um, that's not why it's cool to me. It's it's cool to me because it, like it has one of the great left turns um, in gaming history in my mind. It's you don't know that that's you know going into the game that that's what it's going to be. Yeah. And in fact, for the for half an hour or more, it's like this is a hard, what happened in this fucked up house. Where, is Where are they're the all bodies? dead? What's happening? Yeah. yeah like, I always talk about it, right? Like the time that you know, you come in the house. There's the staircase. There's over there. Instinctively, for some reason, I went left, which is crazy when you find out the game just played. You know, it, the, everything's where it should be. But I f somehow felt like I was on the right path for it. But go left into the TV room that's on with snow or like an emergency message. And you find the poltergeist book. And I'm like, here we fucking go. All right. <laughs> and I remember walking back to the door and just walking to the doorway. And I'm looking right out the door. And I, I kept going like this. 
like going into the wall to the door to the wall to the door because I'm expecting some kind of monster goo, ghost whatever to pop out at the other end and like spook me. And when it didn't happen, you like I inch out and I keep right. inching around the house. Like, what is yeah, going on? Later. And I, I think that you know, I I like the story about the girls and like how yeah. they find each other and so I think that's cool. But that's not that's not the major beat for me. Like it's it's just the game is just is well done and 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 I don't you know we've talked about this game. This game is a divisive game. I think more than it should be. Um, and there are games out there that people love and are critical darlings or whatever. And, and I just don't get. So I don't mean this in a condescending way. But there are just a lot of people that just don't understand like why this game's good because they really. I've 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 heard few people play it and and have any regret about having spent time with it. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of people that just it's a walking simulator and all that kind of it's stuff. Like yeah, an like hour maybe, and a half maybe, long. Maybe we need a definition of what you a game is. You can beat it in under sixty seconds. Yeah, it's like yeah, you can. There's a trophy for it. Yeah, do you know uh, if you know exactly what to do and how to do it? <laughs> um, but to me, it's it's one of those situations where I I just feel like. Um, the, the unfortunate thing about it is that I, I think more people need to give it a chance, but I also think one of the unfortunate things about it is that it, it, it spawned games that are less thoughtful. That like mm. It seems like a game that people can make, like it's an easy game to make. You don't have to worry about AI and all, you, you have an environment, you walk around it, and you know, Firewatch comes to mind for me where I'm like, this game totally whiffed. And, 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 and got home, just cracked the fucking bat on the ball and, yeah. and hit it 425 yards, you know, or feet, not yards, because that would be an insane hit that no one can do. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think Gone Home's super special. Um, the unfortunate thing is I think, like, similar to Journey to Abzu, ah. like, where Abzu is a super try-hard journey and, like, it doesn't resonate because of Journey, sure. because we already sure. have a journey. I do feel like Gone Home is one of those games where it's, like... The, just I'm just gonna let Steve Gaynor do his thing because I'm not I'm not so sure that any like there are very few studios that can do this. Sure, they kind of I don't want to say they pioneered this particular thing, but in a way they did. Well, that's and, why I look forward to games like um, uh, Apartment, which I backed on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. right? Which seems like Gone Home, but it's different people and there is gameplay elements and you're switching things around with it. You, we talk about uh, Emily is Away, a yeah. game that again you're not playing, but you're kind of playing and you you're making choices, but it's not like I'm walking around a house doing it. Yeah, you can you, take this and twist it. So uh, I was looking through uh, comments recently and I somehow stumbled upon that video and someone made a really really interesting um, observation for our playthrough of yeah. it, where they're like. For me playing through it, there was a point where all of a sudden I didn't feel immersed anymore and it felt like it was someone else's story and whatever. And he's like, and then I watched you guys let's play. And I, th I found that moment because you guys stopped referring to it as I and started referring to it as he. Ah, <laughs> really? And I was like, that's oh, fascinating. That's really interesting. Well, when, she, when it starts getting all like date rapey, I don't think we want to be attached yeah, to it as much. We're like, well, okay, well, clearly it's not on this guy. <laughs> Number four is a slot previously inhabited by Uncharted 3. I'm putting in Uncharted 4, Yay. which is a cheat, which is a cheat, no, of course. Not. Yeah, it is because Uncharted 4 means so much to me because it is the payoff of the Uncharted story, right? Like, I don't know if I, it's impossible to sit here and take them one by one, piece by piece, right? Uncharted 3 was probably there again. And it was, I mean, I, you know, I still think Uncharted 3, 10 out of 10. But I think it's it's there because, again, it's like, well, Uncharted 2 was a disappointment to me because it was beat for beat Uncharted 1, and I didn't like the, da, da, da. Uncharted 3 was so different with it was Sully and Drake's story, and there was more on this. Uncharted 4 you get to, right? Like, and I will keep it spoilerish free. Like we're not gonna get crazy with it, but like, it's the culmination of that entire thing. It's them mm -hmm. having the conversation. Because I'm in uncharted for the story, right? The gameplay is fun or whatever, and it's beautiful. But I love the characters, and I want to know their story. And this is the one where they do that. They t they have the conversations I've always wanted them to have. They answer the questions I've always wanted them to answer. There'll be moments of like, we can talk about that later. I'm like, gotcha. And then they talk about it five minutes later. Like, no, no, we're talking about it now. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, or we're getting everything I wanted out mm -hmm. of this. Let alone the ending. Let alone the power of that. That and let alone the you know importance of closing that book and putting Nate's story on a shelf. Like, I think it's a cheat because I'm so tied up. Like, I am saying the Uncharted franchise is, like, number four for yeah, me, right? Yeah, I mean, but that, that's what's really cool about this this whole topic, the seven fave games, is, yeah. like, you need to look at the franchise and you have to make those hard decisions, but it's, like, really, all the Uncharted games are fantastic. Yeah. So it's, like, the fact that there even is that conversation of, is two better than three, is four better than this, whatever. It's, like, that's so awesome because they're all so, so, so good. And I agree. I think four is the best that they, they've had, and I feel like they really again knew what they they had with two knew what they had with three and obviously with one and they're just like all right but what do the people that love these games want and yeah they did that yeah and that's the most compliment yeah yeah four is is fantastic it ramps yeah yeah it's it, a it definitely start i well i don't think i don't know if it's <laughs> it's uneven but i think it's only uneven in terms of when we think about it as a video game and if that makes sense right like yeah. i like when you when you get back and you look back at the journey and when you go back and you platinum and you play it over and over again like even at the time i remember being like 
the, I think it was night one, you would come out and I was just a little bit ahead of you. I was like, what do you think? And you're like, it's kind of slow. I'm like, it is kind of slow, but I think it's going somewhere. It's starting to get somewhere. And then when you get, you see the entire journey, it was like, oh, we were ramping up to where we were to hit our stride to go yeah, with it. Yeah, it gets by the teens uh, in the chapters. It gets uh, fantastic. I think what I like most about it is that it's not much of a video game. Like, and I know that's mm-hmm. weird, but there's not, it's not very shooty. Compare, um, yeah, compared yeah, to other insurance. Yeah, yeah there's, the roping is it's like, you know, you know, I, have, I have mechanical, pro- I have actually plot problems with that. It doesn't make any sense, but uh, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You got to suspend your disbelief in any sequel. Of course, they're going to add things that don't make any sense. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, the, what, the takeaway is the ending. The, yeah. uh, the ending is phenomenal and really turns things on its head. And I really just want to reiterate, if you haven't played it, like I, I really tried to stop people from jumping in the four without having played the trilogy on PS3. And some people did it anyway. I 100% stand by the fact that that is fucking stupid. Sure. Um, and that you simply will not, cannot, and 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 there's just no way you get Uncharted 4 without playing the other three. Like There's just no way any of it resonates with you the way it should. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't believe that for a second. You have no attachment to these characters. You don't know who the fuck Sully is. You don't know who Drake is. The, the scene in the attic, for instance. Yeah, yeah totally no power in that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, think it's, I mean, I, I disagree in the sense that I think people could play it. I agree that you get way more out of it. Yeah, the power the is just ones. removed from but yeah, I, mean, I, think, so like why? I do think that Ford did a really good job of introducing the characters and why they're important, even if you don't know it. Um, and again, that's hard to say because I do know it. But uh, the the scene in the attic, it's just like I feel like that does a good job of getting you to understand he's done things before. Sure. You know? But I, I just feel like it's such a waste. Like play the fucking trilogy before you play. Agreed. Charger, Absolutely. Please. Agreed. And fight for fortune. Uh, my top three games haven't changed, so I'll go through them somewhat quickly. Uh, number three is The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Mm. Uh, mm. Game changer for me. Uh, I I put off playing that forever. Told my friends I didn't like Zelda. I never really played one before. And when Mike O'Brien finally gave me the cartridge and gave me his guide, and he was like, play this fucking game. You know what I mean? Like, you have to play it. I put it in that night and stayed up till three in the morning the you know night before I was to play my or take my ACTs, which is a terrible idea. I don't do that. I don't even know if they do the ACTs anymore. But like... It was a game that once you got into it, and I, I mean, I'll never, ever forget that. I thought I was, it's a you know, tired Greg Miller story, right? Of like the coming out of the temple of time, being a grown up link and walking out into this world of Hyrule that had been bustling and amazing and colorful. And, and you know, it's just zombies. I will and mummies. And I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. And like running off and trying to figure out what happened. And I always go back to in high school, you know, I'm playing in high school. We did then. Uh, one of the assignments in English class, whatever, in honors English was like, write a college essay and, and compare and contrast two time periods in any of these books. And I had read none of those books. So I just wrote it about Ocarina of Time. Got a B plus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Closure. But like, it was that powerful of a moment for me. And again, it's another video game moment of what video games can be. And the mm-hmm. fact that Zelda, which is this game that isn't voice acted and isn't amazing cutscenes, you know, in this and this, that and the other back then on N64. I'm sorry, there was voices in it. Ah. Listen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Rolling across Hyrule for hours and hours because it's a little bit faster than walking. But like it, it, but like to tell me a story in that way, and then let me have that moment, and mm-hmm. let me connect with the Gorgons in Zelda, and want to know what's happening in Sheik, and all. I mean, come yep. the fuck on, that was no. an amazing, I mean, amazing it, game. It's crazy, and that, this is the thing. Like hearing your guys' games, I'm like, man. How did I not put a Metal Gear on my list? How did I not put a Zelda? How did I not put an Uncharted? Yeah. That's great. That's well, seven, seven games is a very limited thing. I, I think I remember playing Ocarina of Time in '98. Um, with Mike Pope, who's my neighbor. what up, Mike Pope? And uh, I was really blown away by it. I, I wasn't convinced at that time that anything had to be three D. I was like very like mm, very skeptical yeah, yeah. of this uh, ninth grade, tenth grade, and, and uh, it was a really great game. Now I think that Ocarina of Time suffers from one thing in particular. There's no tingle in it. Which is a huge problem. Tingle, Tingle, Tingle was the man. Of it also man. suffers in that it's not linked to the past. Yeah, linked to the past is, is an issue. Is awesome. Uh, I think Majora's Mask is the better 3D Zelda game, but I uh, um, for lots of reasons. But I think that um, Ocarina of Time is an undeniable classic, classic. and a very important. It's game. a ten out of it's ten. It's a very important game. It's so so. It's a perfect game. I think it's like it, it teaches you everything you need to know. It gives you this sense of wonder every hour. There's something that makes you go, huh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know, and that, I say that now. Like, I bet you that the 3DS remake is fantastic, too. I think they updated it in uh, a great, great way, and the, the visuals of it are awesome. And I think that people could play it now and it'd still be just as good as it ever was. Number two is Super Mario World. We put it on here. It's been here. We've talked about it before. Uh, my, my personal story with it, right, is that I was a Sega kid through and through. Mario was always the enemy growing up. I had to rep Sega. And so when I, I was super late to it, probably. 
seven or eighth grade going to Matt Noel's house. And I was there every day for a summer and we would hang out and go fishing and screw around or do whatever. And eventually like he, he had it there and he's like, you should try, just try it, just try it, just try it. And I played it. And then every day he would just do what he would read comics or whatever. And I would sit there and just play Mario world to the point that when I, when a school started back up, I went to Funko land and traded in a bunch of crap to get an SNES and Mar- super Mario world. And it's the only thing I ever played or bought for that SNES. I oh put it, God. I put it on the shelf. I turned on Pinkerton, muted the TV, and I would sit there and listen to Pinkerton on repeat and play Mario World over and over and over again. I mean, I can't hate on that. To where to this day, I, if I hear Pinkerton, I think Mario World. And if I play Mario World, I think Pinkerton or hear Pinkerton. And it's just amazing. You know what I mean? Because I think it, probably in the same way, Ocarina of Time is so seminal to me. Mario World too, or Mario World was as well because they, that was my first real Mario game. Like that was my Mario game, right? Well, I guess I had Game Boy, but Mario. But like Mario you know, Lands are exactly. Different. Yeah, Still great. this is my Mario and this was my Zelda. So like, you know what I mean? Like I remember in Zelda getting to the the battle with uh, Ganon or whatever. And uh, when he, he's throwing light Literally at you. Right when you said that it, they can't see it too well. Oh, yeah. but, like, can you move for the second call? I don't think. No, it's not going to work. But anyway, like, battling Ganon. Right when there. we when we <laughs> got to that, when I got to that part, like, and I didn't know to hit back the light balls when he's throwing yeah. his light. I just didn't know what to do. I remember talking to my Michael Bryan the next day. He's like, oh, it's a callback to the old games. You got to hit. I'm like, oh, I never would have known that I never caught any prompt tr- cluing me into that. That's cool. But I mean, that's the thing. That was my Zelda game. This is my Mario game. And then my knowledge of both built on that yeah. to want to go back and play other stuff. And then number one, of course, I make a big deal about it all the time. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, mm. uh, you know, for forever and ever and ever. It was Metal Gear Solid because of what it meant to me and what, you know, what I thought, what that experience was and Poe and I playing that, you know, all night long one night after we rented it at Blockbuster with Army Men. Peace Walker was they're making a PSP P- uh, Metal Gear like that's going to suck. And that'll be co-op. that'll be stupid. Oh, there's going to be co-op, blah, blah, blah. And then to get that and go to that, I'll never forget when they finally, well, actually, when I went to my first and only TGS for IGN, that was when they dropped the, in Jap, Japan, they dropped the demo or whatever. And so we went back, we uploaded to IGN's uh, page that you could go there and get the file and put on your memory stick duo and go get it. And I remember sitting there at TGS playing on we were it was IGN was like partnered with Alienware or something but it wasn't IGN's booth they had like a they were sharing this booth so I just sat there and like Caleb Lawson made DV tapes of me just playing there and people gathered around this booth that had nothing to do with Metal Gear to watch me play Peace Walker over and over and over again and I was like this seems like it's gonna be awesome it seems like it's gonna be awesome and then going to that review event in San Francisco and you walked into a room and you want to talk about a Greg Miller event it's in San Francisco it's two days uh, eight or nine hours a day and you walked in this room and it was just tables lined with PSPs and you just sat down with these things and you had everybody around you so and it was you know i was clowning this game out i was just destroying it but then to have like people need help and you'd go over there and co-op up with them or i would you know we i'd want to go farm over and over and over again get all the ai cores and stuff go back with sam bishop and sit there and go da 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 and like then when it finally came out and we've talked about this with jared petty recently on the games cast the fact that our experience with our experience with mobile games is so different or, you know, portable gaming, I guess, because it was all right. I took a train to work every day. So I was, I was obsessed with peace Walker and it would be that. All right, cool. I'm, I would go there and just ping every random Wi-Fi I went by, go fight the soldiers, bring them in, drop the ones I don't need, improve my mother base staff. All right, build up mother base, do this, keep working on this and do it over and over and over again where train rides flew by. And then it was the only, the only time I can think of with a PSP game for sure. in. I guess it's kind of hazy, I guess, but I mean, in terms of like a game where you were sharing it with somebody else, where we, I would make dates with people and go out. Caleb and I would go to bars and play. Mike Pereira would come over to my house and we would just sit there and play Peace Walker to grind out and get better gear and get better things. Like it was so perfect for what I needed and what I wanted. And it still had, which, you know, the one thing, because like obviously Metal Gear Solid 5, uh, Fan of Pain, takes all these things, HDIs them, puts them on the PlayStation 4. Awesome. I'm glad everybody loves it. The gameplay there is amazing. But this Peace Walker still was Metal Gear. It still was David Hayter, and it was awesome cutscenes, mm-hmm. and it and was story. It w- it was the first. I always talk to talk about it, right? Where it's really, I think, the first, maybe only Metal Gear that you can jump into, and it, it makes sense from the get go. Sure, robot arm dude and pads and whatever the hell's going on. But, but nobody the, knows. I mean, even the people playing that. But the fact, the really fact know. of it all was right. It's like you're this dude. You're out of it. You don't want to go back. Here's this tape from your boss, your mentor. You you we've already it's established already. You killed this woman, and she is talking. Do you want this mission? And he's like, fuck yes, I have to take this mission and go out on that. And then to get there and meet Strange Love and get the horse and do all the it was just like yeah. what a fucking ride that game was. Oh my god. 